Hi everyone, my name is Shanna. Welcome to Pond View Farm. We're going to make a simple uh, goat's milk soap batch today. Um, I wanted to just go over the ingredients first and also all of my tools. Um, I chose very simple ingredients today just because it's going to be a basic recipe to just get you started. Uh, the, the five main ingredients, we've got lard, that's going to be a big ingredient, coconut oil and grapeseed oil. Um, and then, of course, I've got my own goat's milk soap that I, I melt from my goats. I always keep it frozen for my soap making. And then sodium hydroxide, which is lye. Uh, for my tools, we've got two big two uh, stainless steel bowls. You always want to go with stainless steel or glass. You don't want to use plastic uh, for fear of it melting. Um, and then two glass uh, measuring cups. I've got a two cup um, measuring cup and then a one cup. And then... Um, a small a small scale which um, can be easily found on eBay and then some these are my simple uh, rectangular uh, molds they're silicone molds so it makes it easy to remove the soap after it's been um, hardened and it can be removed from the mold um, and then also we've got an instant read thermometer it's important that it's instant read so that way you can get a quick reading um, on your oils and your soap and your um, milk and lye mixture um, and then I've got my safety goggles. Um, I got these actually through Brambleberry because they're nice and comfortable. Um, and then of course I keep nitrile gloves on hand. Um, and then the other tools that you need are just a, um, an immersion blender. I prefer the immersion blender. It works a lot more efficiently than hand blenders. Um, I also like the idea of the stainless steel tip. Um, that way there's no chance of any of it melting when you're mixing your soaps. Um, and then the last few tools, I've got a ladle, um, spatula, a, a silicone spatula um, that just helps to scrape all the um, soap out into your, to put it into your molds. And then I just keep, um, I use a spoon for mixing and then I just keep a, just a few butter knives um, on hand for uh, cutting out the harder oils like the coconut oil and the lard. Um, and I always keep a roll of paper towels on hand and I also always like to keep my uh, recipe on hand so I've got it close by um, just in case I need to reference my numbers when I go to weigh everything. So those are the things to get you started. Um, most of this stuff I actually found at Goodwill um, or places like Walmart. It's, it's relatively inexpensive to get yourself started. For I'd say less than $50 you can get a decent setup going and, and be able to get started with soap making. So let's get started. Okay so to start off we um, put your, your bigger measuring cup right on the scale and then that way you can, you can tear it so that way it, it gets the weight without it gets the weight with the glass on it. All right. I always like to start with my lard first. We're looking for eight ounces of lard. So you put it right into your measuring cup. We just went a little bit over so I'm going to take a little bit out. Try to get it just as close to that number as you possibly can. 801, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So we take it off. We actually throw it right in the microwave. I keep a, I've got a, sec a second microwave downstairs. It's a nice little one for this use. I always try to start off with that a minute. Let that go. So we're, we're almost melted there. I'm going to put it in for just a little bit longer. I'm going to try just 30 seconds this time, just until most of the lard gets melted. All right, we're at a good consistency there. There's a little bit that's not melted, but that will melt with the other oils that are nice and hot. Okay, we throw it right in our smaller of our two bowls. To let that get all out into the bowl. So I keep little paper, paper towels on hand, just always get the edge, just to keep my scale clean. And then once again, I'm going to turn that back on, tear it. I'm going to do the grapeseed oil. This is four ounces this time. Went a little more than we needed to, so I'll dump a little bit back in. And now we went... A little too under. It's all in the weight. It's the, the fun of chemistry. Alright, so we're at 4.02. That's 
that's close enough. That's not going to matter. And back into the microwave. Because this is already in a liquid state, I just do it for a minute just to get it warmed up. Yeah, that's pretty warm. That'll go right into our bowl. Right into our bowl that already has the lard melted down. And last but not least, our coconut oil. So again, my scale is back at a tear. Where the, uh, where the measuring cup is actually still a little hot, it's going to start to melt a little bit before I get it to the microwave anyways. Again, we're looking for four ounces of coconut oil in this recipe. Alright, 4.02, that's good. Again, back into the microwave. Because this is another solid, I'm going to put it on for a little bit longer. I'll put it on for a minute 20. Alright, we're nice and melted. It's a little, little warm taking it out. Pot holders are also a good idea to have. Alright, and that goes right into our mixture as well. So we've got all of our melted butters and oils all mixed together now. And those just sit while we're getting the milk and lye mixture situated. So we can check the temperature. Right, so it's, it's creeping up there. What you're looking for is between 90 degrees and 120. It's still creeping up. It's just past 100 right now almost to 110 so that's a good place to be uh, because once you're you're done with your uh, milk and lye mixture it's gonna be it'll drop just a few degrees and then be at the perfect temperature for mixing everything together at the end all right so now it's time to weigh our milk so you can tear tear out your scale and as you can see it's um, it's still frozen but it's um, it's melted down just enough so you can work with it. So you can, there's a couple parts broken apart. You can stick your knife in a little bit. You want it just past the slushy stage so you can actually get some out, but it's good to still let it be a little frozen so that way the, um, the lye doesn't curdle it. The other option that you can always use is um, uh, using an ice bath underneath your, your mixture. So if your so if your milk is a a little more in the melted state or in its natural state, <clears throat> you can put your whole entire bowl in a, you know under on top of an ice bath to keep it all cold. So what we're looking for in weight is 6.08 ounces, and that sounds a little that sounds incredibly specific. <laughs> Get as close as you can. Um, some scales, I know one of the first scales I used. It didn't read that far in. It uh, it only read, you know, like 6.1. So I just kind of, you know, did my best rounding that I could. A little bit slushy there. There you go. I'll leave it right at that. All right, this goes right into your larger bowl. And then... That one aside for now. Now I use my smaller bowl. I have to re tear that. It's this point in time you put your gloves and goggles on. So now we're going to get up the light. If you want to, you can always start with the gloves if you don't want your hands to get all greasy, but I find it's just easier to work with my, with my hands without the gloves on. And my awesome sunglasses, uh, safety glasses. They're from Brambleberry. All right. So this we're actually looking for 2.25 ounces. So 2.22. I'll go with that. All right. This is where the serious chemistry starts to happen. This is where 
you need to move slowly. You don't want to go too fast because you don't want it to curdle your milk. So I've got my line, I've got my spoon. I literally just do a few little quick dabs, start stirring. You'll notice pretty fairly quickly that it starts to melt the milk. The, the, the key is to add your lye to your, your milk or if you're not using goat's milk and you're just using water, just add it to the water. You never want to go the other way around. You never want to add your milk or water to the lye. That's when, for lack of a better word, the explosions happen. That's when it can all kind of, you know, come up and do a volcano effect on you. Already getting getting it pretty melted. If you work too fast, your milk is going to curdle and turn orange. So if your milk starts to turn orange, you need to stop, and more than likely, you need to start over. Just little bits at a time, nice and slow. This is actively heating it all up. Because again, with this, you want to reach that temperature of 90 to 120 degrees. And it's, and it's a good idea to keep it all moving too, as best you can. The longer you let it sit, the better chance it has to start curdling and giving you problems. Pump fill in. See, it's, it starts to turn a little bit yellow. That's that's normal. That's everything doing what it's supposed to and heating up. Orange is when it's bad. There's that last little bit. I'm going to quickly take the temperature. I would just like to tilt the the bowl so I can get the thermometer in there in, into the mixture as best as I can. It's already up over 80. And it's already up over 90. So I'm not going to let that go any longer. I am going to go, I'm going to add my oils immediately. So we just dump it all right in. This is where it's good to have a spatula just so you get all the scrapings you can off. So you don't lose any oils. Alright. And then get your mixer and you start mixing. You don't want to move the mixer too much because you don't want to you want to keep the bubbles down as best as you can. With a small batch like this, it's, it, it can help if you tip the bucket just a little bit. After mixing for a few minutes, that's when you can start adding in your scent. Today I'm using a, uh, a, an essential oil. I'm going to use eucalyptus. When you're using essential oils, you really only need a, just a, a few drops. You don't need a lot. Tip that bowl again. So what we're looking for, you can stop every now and then. And you want to just lift your your mixer out. Um, the best thing I can relate this back to is making whipped cream to to get those those peaks that you're looking for. Um, so we're gonna be, need to reach trace. We're not there yet because when you see I pick that up, it just falls right back in. Um, it should leave a nice little ring once it's ready. <laughs> Almost there, lifting this out. You can see it's starting to hold a little, little tiny bit of a peak. You can see as I'm moving it, it's already a little bit thicker. All right, that's a good spot to be. I swear, the ladle comes in handy. You can just scoop some up and stick it right in. You can let it go a little bit farther to trace if you want. It's kind of 
mostly depends on how you want your soap to look. If you want it to be a really, really smooth bar, then do it just uh, pretty much where I'm at right now. It's a little bit of a trace, but not too much. If you like the extra uh, design of, you know, as you, as you bring that up, it'll kind of stick up, you know, make a, a neat little, like, wave design. Just let it go a little bit farther to trace, and then you, it'll stick in that position. This is where the spatula comes in handy again. Get all those scrapings. So that's all soap you would otherwise leave behind. And there you have it. A one pound of goat's milk soap, about seven bars. So I'm gonna do a quick tutorial on how to use the recipe calculator. I use soapcalc.net. So it's so soap, C-A-L-C, dot net. Okay, so you go right up to recipe calculator. And we'll just close out of that window. Um, so what you do, this is a whole, system where you can punch in the different ingredients that you want to use. So right right up in here you've got your weight so that's uh, it automatically defaults to one pound which is what we just made. Um, you can change that to whatever poundage you need for however much you want to make. Um, so then you've got all your different um, oils, fats, and waxes listed right in here which is all just a scroll menu. So what I started out with was I put in lard. You just highlight it, add it, and then we also used coconut oil to 76 degrees, add, and finally we used grapeseed oil and add. So with that we did 50% lard and then 25% of each of the other two oils. And then so you just put in your percentages for how many oils and fats you want to use. Calculate recipe, just make sure it totals 100. And then you go to view recipe. It opens up a new tab and then that brings you to the recipe that we, I just had printed. So it shows you right in here how many ounces you need to um, total up uh, your, your, you substitute goat's milk for the water. So that's the blue. So that's your six ounces. The lye is the next one in pink. And then that's the total of oil, 16 ounces, which are all broken down right here. So this is what you use for each individual fat or butter or oil. And then down right at the very, very bottom there, you hit show graph. That just, you scroll down and you've got your nice graph right there that just shows you um, hard cleansing, conditioning, bubbly and creamy. As long as you've got a, a decent reading on every single one, then you're good to go. The hard is, is registering mostly because of that lard. So that's, that's how you figure out your recipe. So these are the bars of soap. About Just about three hours later, you can already see how much they've hardened up. Um, they'll be ready to take out of the mold in about two days. That's when they are safe to handle. Uh, from there, you want to just set them on like a sheet of cardboard or if you have a wire rack, that's even better to let them cure for at least four to six weeks. Um, if you can go even longer, I, t I like to let mine sit for about three months if I can. Uh, the longer they go, the harder they become, which means the longer they'll last when you go to use them. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have any comments or questions, just feel free to leave them and just check the description for uh, several links for several of the products I used. Thank you so much.